Welcome to Uncovered in the Archives. I'm your host, Brad Pomerantz. When California decided to build a reservoir near Hemet, little did the experts realize that they would uncover one of the largest caches of fossils ever discovered in the Western United States. On today's episode, we visit the Western Science Center right in the middle of the Valley of the Macedons. That's coming up on Uncovered in the Archives. Uncovered in the Archives is made possible in part by Loma Linda University Health. Additional support provided by Coachella Valley Water District, the City of Riverside, California, the County of Riverside, California, the City of La Quinta, California, and by contributions to your PBS station by viewers like you. Thank you. We are inside the Western Science Center. We are joined by Dr. Alton Dooley. Thank you for having us. Uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm a paleontologist, and I've been the director of the Western Science Center for the last four years. Let me ask you, if I may, what is the difference between archaeology and paleontology? Uh, those two fields are closely related, um, but archaeologists work strictly on human remains and human artifacts, the things that are produced by humans. Okay. Paleontologists work on any type of ancient life, be it animal, plant, uh, the traces they leave behind or whatever. Well, let's talk about a big piece of ancient life behind us. Who's that? This is Max. Okay. Uh, Max is the biggest mastodon ever found in California. What is a mastodon exactly? Uh, mastodons are an extinct relative of elephants. If you saw one looking, uh, walking around today, it would, you would think, it's a big, brawny, hairy elephant. Okay. Um, in fact, they're, while they're related elephants, they're only very distant relatives of them. Now, you said they're extinct for how long? Uh, they've been extinct since the end of the Ice Age, about 10,000 years ago. Any ideas why the mastodon went extinct? Well, since it was the end of the Ice Age, it's likely that uh, changing climates had a lot to do with it. Okay, now I'm standing on an exhibit. It makes me a little uncomfortable, but I think it's okay. <laughs> You're not saying anything. It looks like under the glass is Apparently another mastodon. Who's that? Uh, this isn't, in fact, another mastodon. We call this one Little Stevie. Uh, he comes from Diamond Valley Lake, just like uh, Max does from the same area. Okay. Uh, he's a little bit older than Max. He's about 50,000 years old, where Max is about 15,000. So it seems like there are a lot of mastodons here at the Western Science Center. Why? What's the reason for that? Uh, there are a lot of mastodons here. We have one of the biggest mastodon collections in the world, and more than half of all the mastodons ever found in California are in this building. Uh, the reason why is because of one excavation that uh, took place here when the Diamond Valley Lake Reservoir was constructed right behind where the museum now stands. And I understand that this area is now called the Valley of the Mastodons. That's right. That's what uh, the scientists who were working that excavation started calling this place because so many mastodons were being found here. So you said before that you've been here for about four years. So I guess you weren't on that excavation, unfortunately. That's right. I'm wondering if you know anyone we can speak with that was there to give us a sense of what it was like in, in what year was it? It was in the 1990s, okay. so it went on for several years. Uh, and as it happens, the lead paleontologist for the excavation is a friend of mine. Ah, good. Uh, her name is Kathleen Springer, and since I knew you were coming, I asked her to be here today. Well, thank you for that. Let's go talk to the lead paleontologist on that excavation, Kathleen Springer. <laughs> Kathleen Springer, so nice to meet you. Tell us a Me bit too. about yourself. Well, I'm a research geologist with the United States Geological Survey. And in the 1990s, I was a curator at the San Bernardino County Museum. Okay, so let's go back to the 1990s. I learned that the Metropolitan Water District was looking to build a very large reservoir yes. somewhere in Southern California. Where were they looking to do that? Well, they were looking all over Southern California, but specifically they were interested in because it was such a large reservoir, they, they needed it to be south and west of the San Andreas Fault okay. on, a, on a more stable surface. Makes sense. We don't want an earthquake to destroy the reservoir. Yeah. So did they identify a location early on? They did several, okay. but the one that was ultimately chosen was here. Which at Diamond, is? At Diamond Valley. Yes. And where is Diamond Valley? Where are we today? We're in rest, Western Riverside County, um, near the town of Hemet, California. 
So I presume that when a project of this size is being considered, we need to go through environmental impact reports. Yeah. And so did that process take place back in the 90s? Oh yeah, it was a long, grueling process took place. And I want to zero in on the question of paleontology. What did those early EIRs, as they're called, what did they say as it related to paleontology mm -hmm. in the Diamond Valley area? Right, so for this area, they did a record search and they basically assessed that there was going to be a low to moderate potential for vertebrate fossils to be found during any excavation activities. And if any were found, they would probably be of, of little scientific value and fragmentary. So I read, suffice it to say, that Kathleen Springer did not agree with that assessment and you decided <laughs> to do something about it. Yeah, so I, I, I commented on the EIR, I wrote a letter. Right basically saying, based on our experience at the museum and the collections we held from the Pleistocene in this region, that they, they were gonna find fossils when they dug for these, for these dams. And what did the MWD do in response to your comment? They started digging. So yeah. they did not respond to your <laughs> comment. The dig starts, and this is around 92, three, is yeah, that right? Yeah. And huge, huge excavation, and what happened? The archeologists were on site. So there were archeologists during the initial phases of the excavation and they brought bones to the museum. And I've seen pictures from your yeah. archive yeah. where you see these huge movers starting to dig. Mm -hmm. And like you said, bones are uncovered. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, the MWD says, wait, we may oh. need to contact oh. Kathleen Springer. Oh, there are bones. <laughs> there, yeah, are there are bones, bones Oops. coming up. And they were very near the surface as I sort of hypothesized and they they brought them to the museum and went, these are some big elephant, either mammoth or mastodon, and kind of the rest was history. And that history changed your history. It did. Because you proceeded to head up a dig like none other. Yes. Tell us about that dig that took how long? Ten years. It started at around 93. 93 yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the this this, these dams were the largest excavation in the United States. They dug 110 million cubic yards of dirt to build the, the largest and the longest earth and rock fill dams in North America. And so that's a lot of digging, and that's a lot of little tiny paleontologists on the ground watching while huge equipment was digging it all up. And you showed me pictures yeah. from your archives. I'm getting yeah. chills, <laughs> literally, because what you found was truly epic. Yeah. It's like we've never seen in the Western United States. Give us a sense of what you were finding. Well, it was, it, you know, it was, it was remarkable. I mean, fossils were spilling out of the ground. I mean, Literally. You know, mammoth, mastodon, horse, camel, bison, sloth, saber-toothed cat, lions and tigers and bears. Right. All kinds of, you know, I mean, it was just an amazing array of, of late Pleistocene. Now, you were part of the team that found two of the most majestic mastodons ever uncovered. They're here at the Western Science Center. Let's start with Max, whose skull is in such remarkable shape, completely intact. Beautiful, spectacular, amazing. We found Max in the western end of the valley, and he's about 16,000 years old, and we found his beautiful skull and his lower jaw and his tusks, and lots of his other parts, but he's he's one of the most beautiful, really big mastodons. And then there's little Stevie, who's yeah. not little. No, he's not. Tell little. us about little Stevie, he's not little. who's so, here at the and museum. So little Stevie is from the eastern end of the valley, much deeper in sediments that are about 47,000 years old, and kind of a, you know, filled with not just his skeleton, right. but other animals as well, bison, and really amazing locality. Well, what must it have been like for you when you literally are digging and you're uncovering these completely intact uh -huh. mastodons. It was this fast and furious work with took a huge team of people to do it. And it was just kind of like constantly fossils were coming in to the museum every day, bundles and bundles and bundles and giant jackets. Was this an excavation of a lifetime? It was, it was an excavation of a lifetime. Tell me. It was amazing because it was a construction site. So you're amongst these gigantic pieces of equipment that were built specifically to create these dams. So the largest pieces of machinery that had actually been built specifically for this project 
And these people are out there trying to capture a piece of the past. And the pictures that you've shown me are really inspiring. Yeah. And I get it. I yeah. get how this changed the trajectory of not just Kathleen, mm -hmm. but really how we look at uh, ancient history, prehistory right. right. in this entire region. There had never been an assemblage of animals like this found in inland Southern California. Kathleen, I want to ask you to dig deep, mm -hmm. if I can use that cliche, and give me a sense. What was it like for you as a paleontologist to be at that site and find, what was it, 100,000 fossils over this 10-year period? It was, it was unbelievable, amazing. It was shocking. It was exhausting. It was, it was like, can this be real? And, and is more coming in today and more and more? And it was this inundation of awesomeness. <laughs> Kathleen, what exactly do you find on these digs? Bones, lots of bones. And if you want to see them, we can go to the repository and see my colleague, Eric. Okay, let's go. Yeah, let's go. So these are some of the spectacular specimens from Diamond Valley Lake. And I'm just amazed at how well preserved these fossils are. It is. That's why we call it the Valley of the Mastodons. Yeah. Brad, this is Eric Scott. Uh, uh, good to meet Hi, you. Very good to meet you. Absolutely. He was my colleague at the museum during the digs, and he's going to show you around, so I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. you. Eric, I actually recognize you from some pictures that Kathleen showed me from her archives. You were at that dig. How was it? It was amazing. It was one of the highlights of my professional career. I was so staggered by what we found on a daily basis out here. It was simply incredible. So let's talk about what you found. As I understand it, there were over 2,600 sites. You found about 110 different animals. Any examples? I have a feeling there are. Well, as it happens, you were surrounded by fossils that were recovered as part of that project. For example, what you have here is a skull of an ancient Ice Age horse. Okay. This is, uh, you can see you've got the back end of the skull here, here's the roof of the mouth, and here you can see all of the cheek teeth that were in the animal's mouth. Can you estimate the age of this horse? Geologically, the animal would have been between about 11,000 years and about 60,000 years in age. What else can you show us here at the Western Science We've Center? We've got all sorts of fossils. For example, if you look here, here's another animal that was very common here. This was a bison. This wow. is the horn, the horn core of an ancient bison. So we used to have bison living here in Southern California uh, during the Ice Ages, which a lot of people aren't aware of. So well preserved. It really is spectacularly well preserved. And we're very, very impressed by this particular specimen. Okay. But you're probably wondering, why am I showing you horses and bison if this is the Valley of the Mastodons? <laughs> Good point, right? And the reason is because there were so many Mastodon fossils that were found okay. here, including fossils like this. This is a neck vertebra of one of those ancient mastodons. And these are rare animals elsewhere in California. Here you have really abundant remains of mastodons. This is a neck vertebra. This is a vertebra from the chest area from a different individual. You can see this is where your ribs would have attached. This is where the spinal cord would have gone. So you, you, we have all sorts of fossils like these of mastodons but vertebrae are not as informative as skull pieces. And if you look right over here, this is what's left of a mastodon skull. Wow, These this is impressive. Teeth. This is impressive. These are teeth. So if you're looking here, this is actually upside down. It's the roof of the mouth. Here's one tooth here. Here's one tooth Wait, here. You're telling me that those four rows that represents one tooth. Absolutely, yes. This is the, the wisdom tooth of this animal. So here's one tooth. Here's one tooth. And this is characteristic of mastodons having these great big, uh, what they're called, lopes on the tooth. So Eric, how old is this mastodon fossil? It's going to be about the same age as the horse and the bison. So between 11,000 years and 60,000 years in age. And it's because of that age and because this collection so completely captures the ice ages from this part of the Southwest, that this collection has become so critical for understanding the Southwest and the ice age in 
this region. And that's why researchers from literally around the country and around the world have been coming here to study these fossils. But the collections, this is the start of the collection, the core of the collection, it didn't end here. And in fact, more fossils like this are coming in from the field right now. The staff here are actively in the field looking for new fossils from throughout the region. Really? Absolutely, yes. If you go over to the paleontology lab, you can probably see Brittany and Andrew working on new fossils right now. They'll let me in? I think they might. Okay, let's go. Yep, I was given access to the museum's actual laboratory, which is usually not open to the public. So why don't we go inside the specimen room and see what fossils they're working on? Brittany, Andrew. Oh, you must be Brad. I am. Hello, I'm Brittany, the marketing event specialist for the museum. Good to meet you. I'm Dr. Andrew McDonald, curator here at the Western Science Center. Thank you so much for inviting us here. Brittany, I wanted to ask you, uh, what exactly happens inside this laboratory? Well, all sorts of stuff happens. We prepare fossils here after they've been brought in from the field, and we also make replicas of those fossils using our 3D printers. So let me ask you about this fossil, doctor. Mm -hmm. I fancy me an amateur paleontologist, I'm just saying, <laughs> and I feel like I can identify this fossil. This looks like a mastodon tooth, kind of like the one I saw inside the repository. Did I get that right? You're absolutely right. This All is right. a mastodon. This is one of the <laughs> specimens excavated here at Diamond Valley Lake. Okay, but I'm a little confused just because I know that the excavation at Diamond Valley ended, I think, 15, 20 years ago. So why are you still processing this? Well, it was a very large excavation and we found so many fossils that it is still an ongoing process to not only prepare them and get them ready for exhibit, but also to research them. Right, I think 100,000 fossils yeah. found. Brittany, Eric Scott told us that this museum is continuously processing new fossils <laughs> that have recently been uncovered. Is that accurate? That's extremely accurate. Even now that the Diamond Valley Lake excavation is over, we're collecting fossils not only from out of state, but also locally. Okay. Do we have some of those fossils? I was gonna here? say. <laughs> and so what are we looking at, Doctor? This material in this tray is between 18 and 14 million years old. Okay, but I remember Eric Scott said that the mastodons found at Diamond Valley were about 50,000 years old. Right. So this is just much, much older. Much older material. Okay, so could you show us an example? Sure. So this is part of the lower jaw of a horse. Ah. You can see three teeth in the row right for there. For sure, for sure. And this material was collected at a site on National Forest Service land. It's a site that's not open to the public, but I've arranged to take you there on a dig tomorrow. Me? You. I get to go on a dig? Indeed. Okay, well, I'm going home. I'm gonna get a good night's rest. I'm so excited. Thank you, Western Science Center. I cannot wait. Brittany, Dr. McDonald, I can barely contain my excitement. I can't believe we're gonna to go to an actual dig site. Suffice it to say, we're somewhere in San Bernardino County. I wanna get a sense from you, Brittany, why can't we say exactly where we are? Well, we can't say exactly where we are because we need to protect the dig site. Um, if we allow other people to know where it is, it could possibly be looted, and then the fossils would not be able to go back to the museum for study. But doctor, what about the well-intention? They want to find a fossil themselves and they want to go on a dig with their children. Even that could cause some damage to the fossils. Okay, well, why don't we go to the dig site right now? Let's do. Brad, welcome to our dig site. I can barely take the anticipation. Before we start, I wanna ask you, what is it about this location that said to you, in my professional judgment, as a paleontologist, I need to dig here? Well, this is a place that has rocks of the right environment and the right age uh, for us to find the animals we're interested in. But, but what are you seeing? Is it the color of the rocks? 
the, the touch of the sediment. What is it? So the sediment behind us is a type of sediment we call conglomerate. It's a mix of sand and larger material like these cobbles behind us. So you and your colleagues have dealt here before. Yes. What have you found? Well, we found material of two different types of animals, horses and camels. They were both living here between 18 and 14 million years ago. So do you have examples of some of the fossils you found here? We do. Can we take a look? Absolutely. Of course. Right in here. Okay. So these are teeth. So what I'm about to hand you is actually the tooth of a camel. Wow, this is an actual camel's tooth. Camel lived in this region how many millions of years ago? Between 18 and 14 million. And you found this camel tooth right behind us. Right here. Yep. Do you have something else? Uh, of course, let me take that from you. The other one I'm about to hand you is a horse tooth. Okay. Um, from a type of three-toed horse. So not the kind of horses that we have today. And we believe currently that this is a horse called Scapohippus. Now, how do you know that these fossils range in age from 14 to 18 million years old? Well, we study the geological maps of the area, which have been compiled by uh, colleagues and geologists over many years, showing us uh, what types of rocks are here and how old they are. Thank you, Brittany. Can I go dig now? Absolutely. Absolutely. You'll show me what to do? Of course. Let's go. <laughs> So, Doctor, have you found anything? Possibly. I'm looking at this fragment right here, which might be a piece of bone. A bone of? It's hard to say. With this little material exposed, it's, it's hard to make an identification. Are you surprised that you're finding something right now? No, not really. Uh, the last two times we were here, we collected a large number of bone fragments and teeth of horses and camels. So, we scoured the slope pretty thoroughly, but it has rained heavily since then, so it's entirely possible there'd be new things at the surface or something we simply overlooked last okay. time we were here. Let's keep looking. Yeah. Doctor, what about this over here? Could this be an animal bone? That is bone right there. That how, is a fossil bone. How can you tell? Well, it's uh, several things. It's a different color from the surrounding rock. It also has porous texture. Uh, that would be um, the interior of the bone. So based upon where we are, how old do you think this bone is? So it's somewhere between 14 and 18 million years old. I just found a bone that's 14 to 18 million years old. Any idea? Horse, camel, rhino? Horses and camels are the two types of animals we've found here so far, based on the teeth. Uh, from a bone fragment like that, it's difficult to identify right now. This is the best day of my life, for <laughs> sure. So could this be a bone right here? It looks almost purple. That is the bone right there. So there's this piece right here and then a little shard that's already eroded out right there. How do you know? What, what do you see that says to you, that's a bone? So I'm seeing uh, the porous inside structure of the bone, the interior. Any ideas what type of animal, how old the bone is? Well, we can say, since it's from this site, we can say it's between 18 and 14 million years old. Okay. As far as the animal, uh, we have horses and camels from this site, but at this point, it's really difficult to put an identification on it. So once you pull that bone out, how will you figure out whether it's a horse, camel, rhino, whatever it may be? Well, it's difficult to put an, an identification on it right now. When we get it back to the lab, we'll clean the rock off of it, glue it back together, and then compare it to other fossils. Clearly, we are gonna be here for quite a while. I wanna thank our friends at the Western Science Center in Hemet, California for taking us on this remarkable ride. And I hope that you enjoyed this journey as we learned about the Valley of the Mastodons right here in Inland California. I'm Brad Pomerantz. Join us next time to see what we've uncovered in the archives. And here's an Uncovered in the Archives extra for you. So I was recently invited to participate in a media seminar at Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem is Israel's Holocaust Museum located in Jerusalem. The entire week was chock full of fascinating speakers. But the highlight, no surprise, was our visit inside Yad Vashem's archives. We met with the archives director, Dr. Chaim Gertner. Here is Dr. Gertner showing us an actual registration card of a Jewish prisoner at the Munthausen concentration camp where close to 100,000 people were murdered. And here I am next to the original architectural map of Auschwitz-Birkenau. 
the Nazis' largest concentration camp where they killed over one million European Jews. But the most chilling moment inside the Yad Vashem archives was presented by Sarah Shore, who specializes in Holocaust artifacts. Here is Sarah showing us a painting of a Nazi soldier during World War II. Interesting. But then she turned the painting around, and what did she reveal? The artist painted on the backside of a Torah or a Jewish Bible. Needless to say, there was an audible gasp inside the archive when we realized that the Nazis actually desecrated this Torah by painting, of all things, a Nazi soldier on this holy parchment. So whether you are halfway around the world or at your local museum, you never know what might be uncovered in the archives. Uncovered in the Archives is made possible in part by Loma Linda University Health. Additional support provided by Coachella Valley Water District, the City of Riverside, California, the County of Riverside, California, the City of La Quinta, California, and by contributions to your PBS station by viewers like you. Thank you. <laughs>